see you have two sets of data and you want to know whether the two sets are significantly different from each other. That is, you probably know what to do when it's normally distributed, but that is not always the case. You, you probably see that already. Here I made a frequency table, and this is the result of the frequency table for set 1 and set 2. That uh, is already a clear indication that it's not normally distributed. So how, how can you still do a test for it? You can either do it visually, and then you will see that this is what you observed, and that's what you would have expected if it were normally distributed. How did you, you get those results? Make sure that your column A is sorted. Then you calculate the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. It's the probability that a random variable x will take a value less than or equal to the x value. So we put in here, in B2, the following formula. We count how many elements we have in our set. And then in the next one, we do it slightly different. We take the previous value plus 1 divided by the number of cases, and we copy that formula all the way down. Then we calculate the z-value by using the norms inverse function, based on b2, b3, b4. And then finally we calculate what we would have expected by using the norm inverse function, based on that value b2, which is the CDF value, with the average of all the numbers in A1 through A41 and the standard deviation of those two and you copy that formula down. So you will see that this is the end result. Those are the Z values, those are the expected values. That tells you already that this is not normally distributed. You do that by eyeballing basically and you do that also for the second set and that is the same story, it's not normally distributed. You could have also used the skewness function the skewness function is available in Excel. It's called SKEW. And we can make a verdict, a very simple one. It's like a thumb rule that says if the skew, skew value is greater than 2 times the square root of 6 divided by the count, then we have a significant skewness. And we did that also for the other set of values. Again, it's a, it's a thumb rule. It's not the best one, but it goes much quicker than what is coming next. The next one is going to be done with the chi-squared test. Why the chi-squared test? Because the chi-squared test is not sensitive for normal distributions. You can use it for any kind of distribution, but it's a little more work. You calculate the mean, the standard deviation, the count, and the degrees of freedom. The degrees of, degrees of freedom is the number of bins minus 1 minus the number of parameters. In this case, we have the mean and the standard deviations. So that's why we came up with two degrees of freedom. Then we create bins, the upper bin, and based on the upper bin, we calculated the frequency. Here the lower bin is a calculated value, minus 15 in this case, the next one is the same as the upper bin there, etc. Then we calculate CDF, the lower version, based on this formula. Then the CDF upper version, based on this formula with the norm dist function. Then we calculate what the bin area is, G6 minus F6. Then we calculate what we would have expected, that is the bin area times the frequency cases, the expected minus observed, that is I6 minus E6. And then the following formula, expected minus observed to the power of 2 divided by the expected value. And those values are plotted here. Then we calculate chi-squared by using the sum of all these values. The critical value is calculated by using the chi-squared inverse function based on a 5% error chance. 
and F2 is the degrees of freedom. You could have also done chi dist. Now another way to find out whether the two sets are significantly different, whether they come from the same population or not. This is what you would do usually if it were normally distributed. You would calculate the margins, the lowest and the highest bound, and you calculate the standard error and all of that, but that is not possible if it's not normally distributed. So we need another tool, and that is the chi-square test. So this is how we did that. We create value bins and calculate the values and do the chi-square test by using the function chi-square test. Unfortunately, that is not possible in this case because the chi test is a very easy one that has not many conditions, but one condition is every bin has to hold more or same as five cases. And that's not the situation here in the last three bins, that is not so. So we have to follow this rule. How can we make those bins a little more populated by reducing the number of bins. That means, of course, that you, you have a less fine matrix. That means there is less randomness involved, so it is less sensitive to differences. That's the price you pay. But in this case, I made two value bins, and they all have more than five of equal to five. This one is the borderline case, but it's just enough to be able to calculate the chi-square test, which is basically very simple when you do this after you have created the value bins. So uh, the chance that set 1 and set 2 come from the same population is 23%. So that is not a very significant difference. If it were less than 5% or 2.5%, we would say, yeah, set 1 and set 2 are significantly different from each other. And I assume that you know how to calculate frequencies, you ca calculate value bins, and then you select all the cells at once, put the frequency function in there, and accept it with Control, Shift, Enter. Then there is one more tool, and that is the simplest one probably, saves you a lot of work. You use the ANOVA tool, Analysis of Variance, which is a very involved one if you don't have a tool that does that for you. That tool is under Data Analysis. You have to make sure that you do File, Options, and go to Add-ins, and Manage your Excel Add-ins, go there and select the Analysis Tool Pack. I had done that already, so mine is installed. So what you do now, and that is basically very simple, you don't have to do all this work. You go to Data, Data Analysis, and go for the top one, ANOVA Single Factor. There is only one factor involved here. That's the factor we measured. This one in set 1, and that's the same factor we measured in set 2. And when you click on OK, you have to fill in what is your input range, column A and column B, group by columns. Do you have labels? In this case, we do. Set 1, set 2. And if you do that, then you will also get those labels in your overview, in your summary. And your output range, in this case, would be H2. I did all of that already, and when you click on OK, you get this result. Um, what is important to realize there is that the p-value between the groups is 26%. It's very close to the chi-square test we had here, but it's a different kind of test. But still, it tells you also that there is 26 probability chance that both sets are from the same population. You, you be see that also by using the f-value. The f-value you found is 1.28. The critical f-value, that is where it becomes significant, is 3.96. Your actual F value is much lower than the critical value, so there is no significant difference between set 1 and set 2. You could come to that verdict, although both sets are not normally distributed.